if you're feeling slightly dizzy, <laughs> <laughs> well, that probably being slightly dizzy. And um, don't worry, I will have my end users hat on. So what I will try to do is summarize a bit of everything that we have, uh, you have seen so far and try to make some links to the vocabulary and the interest of collection managers from an end user's uh, user perspective and how would that perhaps uh, can be used in manager collection of, of archival paper or, or book uh, and paper uh, collection. Um, so I'll start with um, the collection topography model uh, as we have seen before. And I will just put next to the, the different um, elements that we, uh, that we put together to construct the, the model, what, you, what we have named so far in the, in the different elements and the different um, experiments that we run and the research that was done in order to define the, the variables that will go at the end into, into the, uh, the model. So where we've seen the value framework and what we call the unfit for purpose is where we define the, the fitness threshold. And so far, what we have defined as fitness threshold is uh, determined by the um, evolution of large missing pieces of text in the in a hundred sheets of paper, so keep that in mind. Um, the planning horizon, which whether we ask the public to tell us how long they want things to last for, or whether we decide, or whether we get an arbitrary figure at the moment, it stands at 500 years. We thought that is a reasonable um, uh, time length. Um, the agents of change, the model is looking at relative humidity and temperature, and these are not dynamic at the moment, as it was asked earlier, but you can either put them in as monitored data from relative humidity and temperature, or as data as, as values of relative humidity and temperature we would like to keep the collection under. And the dose response function is the big complicated uh, function that Mattia presented, and the isotopes that come um, through that. And the material science behind this stands respectively to the subjectivity of the public's opinion or our opinion of how things should last longer for and all that. Um, and then the material survey, which includes some of the variables of, of the model, the pH and the degree of depolymerization, um, and the access level, that as Matthias said, we have for instance, the National Guard, we have statistics of access level, and we can spread that over the, the number of records that we hold, or we can examine it in more depth for individual parts of the collection if we like. So we can, the, you'll see in a minute how the model works, and you can say, well, my collection is accessed once a year. Every item in the collection is accessed once a year, or, or twice a year, or whichever number you, you like to choose. P8 and the gift polymerization is actually measured from the collection, and this is something that can be repeated over time at, at various intervals so that the, the model can be run again and the prediction of the model can be assessed depending on what has actually happened in the collection. This, we wanted to show you that actually does happen. It wasn't the fictional number that we, that we put in, and this is Carlotta sitting at the back endlessly taking an NIA spectra of, um, of collection of, um, of books and um, archival records. And these are the... Um, the, the data that we actually put into, into the model for the graph that we saw earlier and that I will show you again in a minute. So to summarize all that, um, the variables that go into the, into the model um, are the, is, uh, is the dose response function and that answers some of your questions about whether that can be, um, whether the model can be applied to other materials. And yes, it can be applied if you change the dose response function. So if you, if you develop a, a damage function, a dose response function for plastics or for photographs or for, um, for iron, you could change that into the model and take, that, and take a different um, approach to different materials. The degree of the polarization was in this case what we, how we determine the, the uh, end of the threshold of fitness for purpose, but again, that could be, that could be changed. Access level, as I said, it could be something from that comes from the statistical um, data of a particular collection, or determined by uh, by you if you can control access. Because in the case of say the National Archives, limiting access will defeat the purpose of, of the of the archive, which is to give access to um, to the um, to the records. Um, the threshold for fitness for purpose is, if I'm not wrong, this um, this function. And although we did examine the evolution of um, uh, tears and, uh, and, and missing pieces, 
we ended up considering large missing pieces of text because that correlated with the perception of, of the public of that being unacceptable for something to be read. However, we do have the data for the for TES, uh, and we do have the data for uh, the other for, for the scholaration, but that didn't seem to, to, to bother people. So we know we haven't put it in there. We can, though, if we want. And I'll show you why it could make sense if the fitness for purpose, the purpose was different than what we have decided to use at the moment, which is to read something. Okay? And then finally, the planning horizon, as I said, we've seen that right before, 500 years. It could be any, any um, other interval. Um, so I grouped all this together in this, um, in this table. And I call the relative humidity and temperature, the environmental considerations, pH and degree of polymerization, the material sensitivity, uh, which is the starting point for the, for the model. Access level of it for purpose is what the collection is meant to be used for and how it's meant to be used for. And then the planning horizon, which we tend to call the expected lifetime, although I'll get to this, I can't really help myself not say this will be the end of the lifetime, although we reiterated that you know, when you see the end of the graph, it's not the, it doesn't mean that the collection is evaporates. Uh, but that's where, uh, because we, we have used this term of the expected lifetime in, in other contexts, I put it in there like this. Um, and um, to link that, uh, if, you ever, if you have been wondering so far since the publication of PAS198, how can this be used in order to manage collections, the terms that you saw earlier are included in the in PAS 19A, where it talks about the life expectancy that can be that should be determined by the institution or decided by the institution, whether it takes the public opinion into consideration or not, it's a different matter. Um, the, um, the use of the collection, which is what um, the access level um, was uh, earlier. And, um, and then the sensitivity of, of your collection, which obviously for our, for our purposes for the model is determined by the PAs and the degree of uh, organization. And um, there we hold, this is the graph from the um, from PAS198 and all the terms are in there, which are in effect, if you remember the, the table before, the variables that go into, into the collection demography model. So they can be added, they can either be determined um, by measuring these things or with the element of subjectivity of us or the public or professionals deciding, deciding upon them. Um, so, just to, before I showed you the graph that Mattia showed earlier, um, this is an example, and that graph is an example, that, and these are the variables that we have input for that particular, particular graph. So the relative humidity is set at 50%, uh, temperature at 18 degrees C, the pH and the degree of depolymerization vary, and these, are, these have been measured by Kaloda using NIR. The access level is set once every two years, so it's a relatively low um, uh, level of access, but that's because we have spread the, the total amount of productions at the National Archives over the entirety of, of our collection. So that's what would equate to. However, as I said, you could examine it for, for smaller parts of the collection, have a higher um, access level. And then the fitness for purpose, remember this because, as I said, I can't help myself saying that oh, this is the end of the lifetime. It's volumes of, um, uh, of 100 sheets that at least 50% of them contain large uh, missing pieces of text. So if a volume of 100 sheets, 50 of them have large missing text, then we deem the whole volume of 100 sheets as unfit for being read because we consider that well, a reader will not be happy if there are that many missing uh, pieces of, uh, of the volume. And that again is something that you know, we, I can go back to, to the presentations earlier today and discuss how we got to that point, how we interpreted the people's, um, the public's opinions and the social research science that went into it. But, but it, it is subjective, as you know, you commented earlier, and it can be changed. If you feel that it's, this is too um, um, uh, conservative, then you can say, well, you know, 80% of it have lots of missing pieces, or you can go back to the other factors of the exams, uh, like uh, discoloration, and say if the volume has a, color, a delta E from the initial one of that, then 
people would not like to, to read it because it's too yellow or it's too brown, and change that thickness of purpose threshold. And then the planning horizon of 500 years. Um, so, without further ado, this is the, um, the, the graph that Matthias showed you earlier, and these are the, the variables as I've just presented. So, um, the black line is the, the entirety of the collection, how its fitness for purpose, which is to not have more than 50% of large missing pieces within it decreases over time. And therefore, uh, at around, I don't know, I think this is, five, this is the length of 500 years, the, um, about 80% of the collection will still not have 50% of large missing pieces of text. Okay? Um, however, if you look at the breakdown of the different types of paper, or maybe subgroups of, your, of the collection, which are the acidic contemporary, the acidic fire and drug paper, say the acidic paper, which has a more dramatic sort of decline in, in, uh, in degradation, will only, almost half of it will have passed that threshold. So half of it, uh, half of that part of the collection, readers, according to our study, will not be happy to, to use because they will consider that, well, you know, there's too much of it lost to, uh, to get the information that we want out of it. Um, this graph is actually, I will, I may step out of the camera for a second and um, show you the way it lives. It lives in, on this um, spreadsheet at the moment, an Excel spreadsheet. And, um, the, the values for temperature and the humidity, the, the, the use and fitness threshold can be changed and you can see what would happen to the, um, the fitness for purpose over time, both for all the collection um, uh, together or for the individual parts of it. So from a collection management perspective, if I wanted the whole of the collection to have a certain life expectancy for, fit, for the purpose that we have defined, then I would adjust the, the temperature, the humidity, or the other variables to extend the, the graph for a stick paper to match, say, the graph for the right paper. So then I know that the, all of the collection will, will degrade in the, same, in the same manner. And that can be achieved if you change the humidity and temperature or if you control use, of course. Um, which, as I said, it may not be always possible. So just to show you that this is um, the, the one, um, the red line below is for the acidic paper, right? And whereas on the, on, on here, we have the same 50% uh, of the humidity uh, in this uh, temperature, I will just change one and say, well, you know, 22 degrees is not unheard of, and relative humidity of, say, 60%, and this is how the, This is how now that has changed in comparison to that. So you can see that the collection of acidic paper is now all behind the 500 years threshold, whereas in this case, only half of it is. And if I lower the temperature of the relative humidity, then I can extend it all to be, you know, after the 500 year um, threshold and match one of the thresholds of the other types of the, of the collection. Okay, so far? Now, this is all good. But it does, uh, I do agree that it includes a certain degree of, uh, it does include a certain degree of subjectivity when it comes to fitness for purpose and all that. Um, that's fine. Okay, that's great. Uh, and therefore, because as I said, I, I discussed the, the graph um, uh, with my colleagues in, in the office, and we played around with the numbers, and for those of you that will come to the four, workshop four, you will have the opportunity to play around with the spreadsheet and see what, what happens if you change the numbers. Um, we changed the numbers and we kind of looked at what would happen to different types of the collection and we couldn't help ourselves say, oh my god, a thousand years, all the collection is, is lost. No, no, two thousand years, all the collection is lost. And although Mathieu said that, that means that the purpose may change and you know what you do with the collection may change. It doesn't mean that the, the material has disintegrated completely. Therefore, what I did was flip this graph upside down. We can balance the results required to give access to the physical records today as opposed to the, to the uh, cost of digitizing in, in 20 years or 50 years time. All that obviously will require quantifying the resources, and this is another issue.
but seeing it this way around, I think at least eliminates the kind of the fear of uh, oh the collection will be lost and you know what do we do what do we do now. Um, as I said, for those who will come to the workshop four, you will have the opportunity to play around with it and see how the numbers uh, add up. And uh, at the moment, we are a bit constrained of, uh, with Excel's ability to handle the, the data and the graphs, but perhaps this is something that can be developed in the future so people can more easily use it. Let's skip.